Also joining the show tonight, defensive back for the Mavs over at Colorado Mesa. Proud new owner of some new hardware, that being the Nikos Cup. Jason Tommy, what's going on, dude? Nothing much, nothing much. I was excited to be here. Dude, I'm excited to have you here. You guys probably a little bit more excited to add something to that hardware case over there at Mesa. How's it feel to have uh, some quote-unquote new hardware, or is it more of uh, bringing it back to where it's supposed to be originally? Bringing it back where it's supposed to be. It's been a few years. No one's really beat mines in a couple of years, so it's pretty exciting to do it for a rivalry game and bring it back where it belongs. A few years is definitely a way of saying it. It was the last time they were beating the Armac play, man. 2021, you guys, Mesa, the ones to knock them off. But between that time, over a thousand calendar days before something like this feat was pulled off, which makes it just all the more impressive. You guys, though, you look solid. And defensively, that effort was a big part of it. You haul in a big interception yourself in the second quarter, which seems like a really, really tough feat against this mind squad. That defense steps up plenty more. It feels like you guys... Obviously not able to get on the board offensively in the first half. Talk about the defensive effort early on and keeping the guys into it and engaged in a rivalry matchup that you mentioned before. We just trusted our conditioning through uh, fall camp, and we knew we'd been through the ringer through that. So I knew uh, as as uh, the defense just stayed in it that we were going to grind them down offensively, and it showed towards the end of the game as uh, we were able to grind it out, put string some possessions together, and – we were able to just keep getting them the ball, keep keeping everything in front. So it, it was an awesome fourth quarter, though. Dude, I, that's saying it incredibly lightly. You guys go on and score uh, multiple times in that fourth and, and literally get just enough to go ahead and put you ahead of that mind squad. Um, one of those being, do you have a blocked PAT as well? Uh, they missed it. They, uh, hit it the, the miss. they hit the post. I got you. I got you. So, like, those kind of plays that, that come through and, and end up being big determining factors uh, in these kind of games. But this Mines team, let's talk about the other side of the ball before we go back talking about the maps, right? They've been putting up numbers, uh, but not maybe the ones we're used to seeing the last couple of years with the Gallic like Matoka under center, or the Harlan Hill winner. Those are uh, some stats that probably are not going to be touched for, for quite some time. Now, that's not to understate the talent they have offensively right now. Foster under center is no joke. But people don't realize the major weapons that are around him, right? McLeod, Shield, those guys on the outside are kind of just the tipping point. Uh, I guess the, the tip of the iceberg, if you will, of this mine's offense. You go back in the backfield, Landon Walker, the O-line, that is no joke. What was it like game planning for all of those guys? It's not like you can key in on one or the other because obviously the other ones will make you hurt. What was it like game planning for that full eleven? We knew uh, we just had to put together a complete game defensively. We have arguably, in my mind, the best secondary in the country with that. And we know we can compete with anybody. Hell and yeah. our front seven played out of their mind. They played a great game, really stuffed the run, forced them to pass. And when they passed, we made plays on the ball. And uh, we were able to just keep everything in front, limit the big plays. And, I mean, mines they have uh, a lot of great guys over there. So, it was a lot of fun being able to compete against some of the best players in the country that have been doing it for multiple years now. So it was a it was a great, great game for us, and it was a lot of fun. Now, as someone who geographically is just very far away from this whole uh, ordeal up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, is this a rivalry where it's one of those bitter deals, or is there a lot of respect shown on the field during the game? How What is that kind of environment like for both these sides? I think there's a lot of respect. Uh, Mines obviously has built a, a great program. And yeah. the narrative around us is that we're a young team. And that's been the narrative since Coach K has uh, gotten the Mesa job. But um, we're ready to win now. And so I am I think they had uh, a lot of respect for us as well because we showed them that we could compete with them. Um, and, uh, like, obviously they're a great program. So it was a, it was yeah. a great win for us. 100%. If they didn't have respect before, guess what, dude? They do now. They have to. You didn't really give them a choice. So uh, that's usually the best way of going about it. They do say respect is earned. I would say uh, you guys certainly did that on Saturday. And you talk about that front seven, right, and the performance that they put together. I think a lot of times we hear about how maybe that defensive secondary can help benefit that front seven. You talk about things like a coverage sack is kind of a term that is thrown around a lot by different play-by-play -play and color guys across the country. Talk about what a disruptive front seven can do for your defensive secondary and how that really complements what you guys have going on in that defensive backfield. Well, I think it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. They, they make life easy for us. We make life easy for them. And it was a combination of both them getting pressure, bailing us out a few times, 
and us getting covered sacks, bailing them out a few times. So I think it was a overall just playing great team defense was our focus. And we were able to do that against one of the best teams in the country. I would certainly tend to agree there, my friend. And uh, talking about Coach K a little bit, he spoke about how this team was due for what he called the, quote, program-defining win, right? He had mentioned that phrase a couple times, uh, you know, during this week. What does that kind of phrase mean to you and this Mav squad? Well, there's a lot of opportunities playing in the RMAG. We play a lot of great teams, but every week we know uh, no one's going to just give it to us, so... Uh, we had to go out there and take it, um, which we did. And hopefully this uh, turns the tides for uh, Colorado Mesa. We're able to keep this momentum rolling for the rest of the season. Absolutely. I think it's a good way of looking at it. And um, it's not like – and you and I both know, and Coach K, obviously, you don't win one game and all of a sudden your program is – boom, to the top levels of, uh, you know, D2 national scene. But now this feels like a program-defining win could be something where now you guys have this extra level of confidence. And now you're maybe clicking on the defensive side in ways that maybe haven't happened before. Where have you seen those kind of biggest improvements you've made as a team? Because you guys obviously haven't been perfect this year. I have a couple of blemishes on the record. But this is certainly a team that we've seen make great strides both offensively and defensively. Where have you seen some of those big-time improvements in your eyes? Well, I think the whole team has just improved drastically from uh, the beginning of the season. Um, we weren't playing as loose the first couple of weeks, and I think that really changed the past two weeks. Uh, the whole defense has been playing loose. The offense is starting to open it up. Um, and the combination of those two things have led to two great wins in a row. So I'm hoping that we can keep that rolling into the rest of the season and keep stringing some wins together. Playing loose is important, and you kind of touch on that. Getting somebody to play loose, not so simple, right? Especially when uh, maybe you have some younger guys on a squad that are trying to put together some schemes or trying to know their assignments on different kind of uh, setups or plays. How do you get, at least defensively, because you can speak on that, how do you get those guys to play loose? Is that a lot of assignment-based pieces and them knowing exactly how they fit into a system? Is that a confidence thing, a combination of both, or something else entirely? I think it's a combination of both. Um, it's a big confidence thing with a lot of younger guys who don't have as much experience. Um, I was a younger guy last year, and I w had some uh, great leaders that helped me um, when I was in the game. So I think uh, as long as there's a, a over communication on the field, mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to be able to do their job, do it well, and do it to the best of their ability uh, fast, in particular. And I think uh, communication is like the main the main reason for that got to have a field general out there on the uh, defensive side of the ball as well we talk about the uh, helmet comms coming to the d1 level can't wait till we get a mic up in your uh, next to your nugget out there on the defensive side huh yep yep i can't wait for that <laughs> <laughs> having a headset on at some point for college football games at any level there is so much shit being said on those headsets i can only imagine just the process of getting that to a working stage at these levels of football uh, when they continually ask more and more of these of these programs now with instant replay and the tablets on the sidelines and other things you have going on. It'll be an interesting day when that does come here, but let's talk about the days right now. Defensively, seven interceptions through five games for you guys. Obviously a big force fumble this past weekend. How are you able to generate those kind of takeaways? I mean, Coach K and Coach Matthews are D.C., we always emphasize that the ball is the issue. So if we can get the ball, take it no matter how many yards the offense gets, if we take the ball away, they're not going to be able to score and we put it in the hands of our offense, the good things will happen. So we're always focused on the ball. That's that's the main reason we're playing defense. We're going we're trying to get that ball. So Hell yeah. The ball is the issue. That's the first time I heard it like that. Obviously, you, the ball is the program is one that gets thrown around, you know, every once in a while and people have different ways of kind of, you know, kind of hyping up that turnover battle and that margin, but uh, the ball is the issue. I like that a lot, dude. But, Jason, that's all I've got for you, my man. Best of luck this weekend. Adam State and onwards, brother. I'm going to be excited to continue following you guys along the way, man.